Have you ever paused to think about the most profound questions about your existence and destiny? Think about this. If you were to die today, where would you go? Heaven or hell? This question is not to alarm you, but to stir a deep reflection on the reality of life and death, which awaits us all. It's a reality that people die every day, reminding us of the fragile and fleeting nature of our existence on this earth. Another question I urge you to consider is, have you lived a life that aligns with God's will, ensuring your place in heaven? These questions are crucial for each of us to think deeply about. I ask you again, if you were to die today, where would you go? Heaven or hell? Today, I want to share with you insights that are not easy to talk about, but are essential for our spiritual journey. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends, many who identify as Christians are, unfortunately, on a path that leads away from heaven. So why is this the case? Is it because they are lukewarm in their faith, have not fully submitted to God, or have not truly accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Remember, believing in God's existence is different from living a life that reflects His will and love. Matthew 7, verses 13 to 14 reminds us, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. My friends, whether we recognize it or not, in our spiritual journey, every decision moves us closer to our eternal destination. Let us delve into three pivotal reasons that might hinder our passage to heaven. Reason number one, lukewarm faith. The alarming reality is that many proclaim their faith in Christ, yet live a life that mirrors those without belief. This lukewarm stance is particularly dangerous because it signifies a comfortable, complacent faith that doesn't challenge or change them. Revelation 3 verse 16 starkly warns us against such complacency. It says, So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth, likening lukewarm faith to something so distasteful that it must be vomited out. True faith is fiery, passionate, and transformative. It's a faith that doesn't just acknowledge God, but actively seeks to know Him, to understand His heart, and to follow His ways. It's a faith that sees prayer, not as a ritual, but as essential communication with our Creator, as natural and necessary as breathing. Yet, so many of us settle for a faith that is convenient, one that fits into our schedule only when we find the time or feel the need. The danger of lukewarm faith lies not just in its lack of zeal, but in its illusion of security. It's easy to believe that because we identify as Christians, our ticket to heaven is guaranteed. However, faith without action, without genuine love for God and for others, is empty. James 2 verse 17 reminds us that faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Our actions and choices are the true reflections of our faith's temperature. Lukewarm faith often stems from a lack of understanding of who God is and what He has done for us. It's hard to be lukewarm about someone you truly know and love. The more we delve into the scriptures, spend time in prayer, and open our hearts to the Holy Spirit's guidance, the more our faith will ignite. 
It's about falling in love with God every day, marveling at His creation, His grace, His mercy, and His love for us. This lukewarm faith also reveals a heart that hasn't fully grasped the gospel's power. The gospel isn't just good news, it's transformative news. It's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. As Romans 1 verse 16 declares, when we truly understand the depth of our sin and the heights of God's grace, our response can't be lukewarm. It's a response of awe, gratitude, and a burning desire to live for Him who died for us. Also, lukewarm faith is a comfortable faith, but sometimes the call to follow Christ is a call to discomfort. It's a call to take up our cross daily, to follow Him through trials, sacrifices, and persecution. Lukewarm faith shies away from these challenges, preferring the comfort of the status quo. Yet, it's through these very challenges that our faith grows stronger and hotter. The lukewarm believer often lacks a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. Christianity is not about following a set of rules, but about a relationship with a living God. It's about knowing Jesus personally, hearing His voice and walking with Him daily. This relationship is what stirs our hearts, fuels our passion, and keeps our faith ablaze. Our faith is tested in the trials of life, and it's through these tests that the temperature of our faith is revealed. Lukewarm faith wilts under pressure, but true faith stands firm, refined like gold through fire. These trials are not to be feared, but embraced as opportunities for growth, deepening our reliance on God and our commitment to Him. Understand that overcoming lukewarm faith requires a conscious choice to pursue God with everything we have. It's a decision to not settle for mediocrity, but to strive for a deeper, more vibrant relationship with God. It's about choosing daily to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. This is the antidote to lukewarm faith, a faith that is alive, active, and ablaze with love for God and others. My dear friends, as we reflect on the state of our faith, let us ask ourselves, are we satisfied with being lukewarm, or do we yearn for a faith that is alive and fervent? The choice is ours, and the time to choose is now. Reason number two, lack of submission to God. In our journey with Christ, the concept of submission is both fundamental and challenging. Submission to God is not about losing our freedom. Rather, it's about finding true freedom in the will of God. Yet, many struggle with this concept, preferring to chart their own course rather than follow the path that God has laid out for them. James 4 verse 7 offers a clear directive Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This scripture points to the dual action of submission to God and resistance of evil, highlighting the transformative power of truly yielding to God's sovereignty. The essence of submission lies in acknowledging God's absolute authority and goodness. It's about trusting that the Creator of the universe knows what is best for us. This trust is not blind. It's built on the understanding of God's nature as loving, just, and all-knowing. Despite this understanding, many of us find submission challenging because it conflicts with our desire for control. We are hesitant to relinquish our plans, fears, and dreams into God's hands fearing that His will might lead us away from our desired destinations. Yet, 
The Bible is filled with stories of individuals who found their true purpose and greatest joy in submission to God. Abraham's willingness to sacrifice Isaac, Joseph's faithfulness in trials, and Mary's acceptance of her role as the mother of Jesus are but a few examples. These stories teach us that submission is not about the elimination of our desires, but about aligning them with God's perfect will. The struggle with submission often stems from a lack of understanding of God's character. When we view God as a strict overseer rather than a loving father, submission feels like a burden. However, when we understand His love, grace, and wisdom, submission becomes a joyous act of trust. It's about believing that God's plans for us are to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us hope and a future as promised in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Also, submission is an act of worship. It's a declaration that God is worthy of our trust, devotion, and obedience through submission. We acknowledge that our lives are not our own, but are bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. This acknowledgement transforms our perspective, encouraging us to live not for ourselves, but for the glory of God. The path to true submission involves daily and intentional decisions to yield our will to God. It means starting each day with a prayer of surrender, asking God to guide our thoughts, words, and actions. It's about seeking God's will in every decision, large and small, and being willing to obey even when it contradicts our desires or understanding. Submission also involves a deep reliance on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth, convicts us of sin, and empowers us to live in submission to God by cultivating a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit's leading. We learn to walk in step with God's will, experiencing the peace and joy that come from divine alignment. The fruits of submission are manifold. They include peace, joy, and a deep sense of fulfillment as we experience the blessing of living in God's will. Additionally, submission brings freedom from the bondage of sin and self, enabling us to live victorious lives in Christ. It also fosters spiritual growth as we are shaped and molded by God's hand, becoming more like Jesus in character and purpose. Yet, the journey of submission is not without its challenges. It requires humility, faith, and perseverance. There will be moments of doubt and resistance, but these are opportunities for growth, drawing us closer to God as we learn to trust Him more fully. My friends, submission to God is the gateway to a life of true purpose, joy, and freedom. It's a journey of trust, transformation, and total reliance on God. As we reflect on our own lives, let us ask ourselves, are we willing to submit fully to God, to trust Him with our dreams, fears, and plans? The invitation to submit is an invitation to experience the fullness of life in Christ. And reason number three, not being spiritually reborn. The necessity of being spiritually reborn stands as a fundamental truth at the heart of the Christian faith. Jesus himself declared the importance of this spiritual rebirth in a conversation that echoes through time, telling Nicodemus in John 3 verse 3, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This statement underscores the transformative journey each believer must undergo, a transformation that transcends mere intellectual agreement 
tradition, or cultural identity as a Christian. Being born again is a radical, deep-seated change that occurs at the core of our being. It is not a superficial shift in identity or a mere change of moral outlook. This rebirth is the work of the Holy Spirit, a divine regeneration that breathes new life into our spiritual death that was caused by sin. It marks the beginning of a new existence, one that is characterized by a living, vibrant relationship with God. This concept of rebirth challenges the popular notion that mere belief in God's existence or acknowledgement of Jesus is sufficient for salvation. The demons believe and quiver, as James 2 verse 19 reminds us. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. True faith that leads to salvation involves a heartfelt acknowledgement of our sinfulness, a genuine repentance, and a wholehearted acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's a faith that transforms, that bears fruit in keeping with repentance, as evidenced by a life increasingly characterized by the fruits of the Spirit. The process of being born again begins with the recognition of our desperate need for a Savior. As Isaiah 64 verse 6 tells us, it's acknowledging that our righteousness is like filthy rags before a holy God. This recognition leads to repentance, a turning away from sin and a turning toward God with a sincere desire to follow Him and live according to His will. However, this transformation is not something we can achieve through our efforts or willpower. It is entirely the work of God. Titus 3 verses 5 to 6 speaks of this regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit, emphasizing that it's not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to His mercy, He saves us. This divine intervention rescues us from the domain of darkness and transfers us into the kingdom of His beloved Son, where we become new creations in Christ, as 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 declares. Being spiritually reborn is also about entering into a new family, the family of God, as John 1 verses 12 to 13 tells us. To all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. This rebirth ushers us into a relationship with God, where we are no longer slaves to sin, but sons and daughters of the Most High, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. The evidence of being born again is seen in the transformation of our lives. Our values, desires, and priorities begin to align more closely with God's. Our actions, words, and thoughts increasingly reflect the character of Christ. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control become more evident in our lives, marking us as followers of Christ. This transformation is ongoing, a journey of sanctification wherein we are progressively conformed to the image of Christ. It involves daily dying to self, taking up our cross, and following Jesus. It's a path marked by grace, where failures and setbacks are met with God's forgiveness, and where growth is nurtured by His Spirit. The challenge of being born again lies in the surrender of our entire being to God. It requires letting go of our old self with its sinful desires and patterns and embracing our new identity in Christ. This surrender is not a one-time event, but a daily commitment to live under the Lordship of Christ 
allowing him to shape us and use us for his glory. Being spiritually reborn is the gateway to eternal life with God. It is the beginning of a remarkable journey of faith, transformation, and deepening love for our Savior. As we reflect on our own spiritual state, let us ask ourselves, have we experienced this rebirth? My friends, today can be the day of new beginnings, a day to embrace the life-changing power of being born again in Christ. Let us remember that our spiritual journey demands more than just passive belief. It requires active, engaged faith, a daily commitment to follow Jesus, and a willingness to be transformed by God's hand. This journey isn't just about securing a place in heaven, but about experiencing a full, vibrant relationship with Christ here and now, which enriches our lives and draws others to His light. Let's move forward with hearts open to God's transforming work, ready to live out the truths we've embraced and let our lives be a testament to the grace and love of God. May we each day seize the opportunity to grow closer to Him, guided by His Spirit towards the eternal joy and peace of heaven. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, I come before you with a heart full of praise, exalting your holy name. You are the Alpha and Omega, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the sustainer of life, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Your greatness is unsearchable, your wisdom boundless, and your love for us everlasting. I magnify you, Lord, for you are worthy of all honor, glory, and adoration. I praise you for your righteousness, your mighty works, and your unfailing mercies that are new every morning. Lord, I give you thanks for the countless blessings you have poured into my life and the life of my loved ones. I thank you for your grace that sustains me, your peace that calms my storms, and your unwavering presence that guides me through every moment of my life. Thank you for the gift of salvation, the hope of eternity, and the joy that comes from knowing you. Merciful Father, I come before you seeking forgiveness for my sins. I confess the times I have fallen short of your glory, giving in to temptations, harboring bitterness, and straying from your path. Forgive me, Lord, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I also forgive those who have wronged me, releasing any grudges or bitterness. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke and bind the spirit of lukewarmness in my faith. I rebuke every force that seeks to dampen my zeal for you, and I bind the spirit of complacency in the name of Jesus. Ignite in me a fire that burns brightly for you, a passion that cannot be quenched. Lord, Grant me the grace to submit fully to your will, surrendering my plans, dreams, and desires into your capable hands. Teach me to trust you completely, knowing that your plans for me are good. I declare victory over every strategy of the enemy designed to lead me away from your truth. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke attacks of doubt, fear, and confusion. I stand firm in faith, rooted and grounded in your love, shielded by your mighty power. Lord, I ask you to bring about a spiritual rebirth within me. Transform me from the inside out, 
making me a new creation in Christ Jesus. Let my life reflect your glory, and may your Holy Spirit guide me in all truth. I pray for blessings of health, provision, and protection over my life and my loved ones. Shield us from every form of the enemy's attack, whether it be physical, emotional, or spiritual. Heal our bodies from illness. Mend our hearts from hurt and fortify our spirits against the schemes of the devil. Surround us with your angels, guarding us in all our ways. Lord, as I say this prayer, together, with everyone listening, I'm grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement, asking you to work powerfully within us and among us. Lord, strengthen our faith, deepen our submission, and complete our transformation in Christ. Together, we claim victory over sin, declare healing for our wounds, and give thanks for your endless mercies. Protect us, guide us, and fill us with your Holy Spirit as we walk in your ways. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Thank you, Lord for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word amen in the comments section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our daily Jesus devotional channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening, and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.